everyone, and welcome to this Get to Know Your Aurora Partner University. My name is Anita, and I'm a project manager at the International Division of the University of Iceland. We will start with a virtual campus tour of the University of Iceland, then a presentation of the university, and end with a panel discussion where international students will speak on their experiences at the University of Iceland. Welcome to the University of Iceland. We're going to show you the ins and outs of campus and everything the university has to offer. Let's start with Háskólatorg, where most student services are located. Háskólatorg has three floors. On the first floor, we have some of the bigger lecture halls, and on the second and third floor, we have most of the student services. Fun fact, I just entered on the second floor. Here at the service desk, you can get all kinds of information. You can get your university card, and you can even get a subscription for the university gym. They know everything. They can even give you directions. Hi, <laughs> where is Verald? Verald is across the street. You can walk the underground tunnel. And here's a map of campus. Your student card gives you access to all the buildings of the University of Iceland and also discounts in many places all over town. Here we have the IT help desk. They can help you with, for example, UCLAN or the wireless connection. Can you give me a hand, please? Yeah, so the first thing you're going to want to do is connect to how we eat your room setup. This here is the third floor. Here we have even more offices for student services. It's quite a maze, but luckily we have a map. Oh, student services. FS oversees all student housing, campus kindergartens, and the cafeterias, as well as the student cellar. These are all non-profit organizations aimed at students with not so deep pockets. Do you have any apartments available? Yes, I receive. Thank you. Student Counseling and Career Center will help you with any study or career-related issue, as well as therapy sessions. Life can be damn tough. The International Office will also help all students of the University of Iceland who want to go abroad on traineeships or summer schools. The University of Iceland collaborates with over 400 universities all over the world. Where do I want to go? Japan. This is the Office of Student Registration. If you have any questions about your studies or applications, these guys have all the answers. They know everything about course registration, sick leave and so much more. This is the office of the Student Council. You can come here anytime if you have any questions regarding your studies. All the staff here are either recent or current students at the university, so they know exactly what issues you might face. And we also have an international officer, especially for you international students. At the student bookstore, you can get anything. Course, literature, magazines, and even university merchandise. Hey. They also have all sorts of great gifts. So if you were ever invited to a birthday party last minute, you don't have much time, the student bookstore can be a lifesaver. Hey. And by far the best coffee in town. Student Cellar is a budget-friendly restaurant in Reykjavik. And it's located here on the first floor of Háskólatorg. It's a great place to meet friends, relax, watch a movie, or just grab a burger. Perfect. Hauma is located in eight different places around campus. They have a great selection of food and drinks. Hauma in Háskólatorg, Stakkahlíð and Teknikarður also serve a warm lunch and one option is always vegan. And of course, we also recycle at the university. The university gym is open for all students and the yearly fee is really cheap. You can either take classes here or book the hall for you and your friends. Adding to the many computer rooms in the university, we also have a few quiet reading rooms in the main buildings on campus. Shh, but you have to be really quiet. 
Our vision is a sustainable campus with little to no emissions. Our university is easily accessible by bus, or you can hop on one of these scooters. Or ride the bike! This was the University of Iceland in a nutshell. We're sure you're gonna love it here. For further information, please visit our website. We can't wait to meet you. The University of Iceland is one of 11 member universities in the Aurora Corporation that are listed here. This cooperation of universities incorporates the sustainable development goals of the UN and emphasizes social responsibility. A few facts and figures for the University of Iceland. We are a state university founded in 1911 and situated at the heart of Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. We are the largest and the leading higher education institution in Iceland. And we are the only one offering undergraduate, masters and PhD programs in all major academic disciplines. As for ranking, we are ranked between 151 and 175 in a list of the world best universities for life sciences and among the top 250 for physical sciences. This is according to the latest subject rankings from the Times Higher Education. We are also between 301 and 400 in impact rankings for 2021. We have a new strategy for 2021 to 26 with four main priorities. One, open and international. Two, sustainability and diversity three strengths based on quality, and four, last but not least, a good place to work. The priority of Open and International applies to our Aurora partners. It entails forming close partnerships with international communities to provide universal support for interdisciplinary collaboration and to increase international collaboration in teaching and learning. The university has five schools, with four to six faculties each, a total of 26 faculties. We have the School of Education, the School of Engineering and Natural Sciences, the School of Health Sciences, the School of Humanities, and the School of Social Sciences. The student population has never been so large and is now approximately 15,000 students. More than half are undergraduate, around a third are master students, and just under 700 are PhD students. The number of international students has also gone up in recent years and is now just over 10% of the students' population. There are more than 200 courses taught in English and many of them connect well to the themes of the Aurora, such as the courses Sustainable City and the course Arctic Circle. The Arctic Circle course gives students an opportunity to participate in the Arctic Circle Assembly Conference held every year in Reykjavik. Welcome to Iceland. Iceland is a popular tourist destination known for its striking and unique landscapes. It is a young island with numerous active volcanoes and geothermal activity. It is an ideal destination for adventurous students that are interested in nature activities. In the winter, the Aurora Borealis can be seen on clear nights, even from the city. And although the name might suggest otherwise, Iceland is not as cold as it sounds. The University of Iceland is in the heart of Reykjavik and its main building is one of the city's most recognizable landmarks. Reykjavik has long been known for its vibrant cultural scene and the nature at its very doorstep. The city is modern and safe, and its size allows it to be relaxed and easygoing. 
It is also a UNESCO city of literature. Iceland may be small, but it has one of the highest rates of books per capita. One in 10 people in Iceland will publish a book during their lifetime. So to say that Iceland is a nation of bookworms is not an understatement. So, to prepare yourself for your arrival in Iceland, you can start by learning Icelandic on our free platform, icelandiconline.com. Thank you for attending this presentation. And now we will proceed to the panel discussion with students. Hello, my name is Alma Augustothir and I am the president of the Aurora Student Council. I'm also the international officer with the Student Council here at the University of Iceland. And I'm here with some of our wonderful international students. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hello, uh, my name is Armando and I'm a master's student in uh, international studies in education, in the School of Education. My name is Marcelo. Um, I finished my MA in sociology back in June, and I have started my PhD also in sociology. Hey, my name is Lisa. I am from Germany, and I am currently in my third year of my bachelor studies in geophysics. Hey, my name is Leon. Um, I'm from Frankfurt, Germany. I'm studying business, finance, and administration economics, and it's my second year. Great, thank you. And thank you all for being here. Uh, I was wondering, what is it that made you choose to come and do your exchange or your studies here in Iceland? And maybe we could start with Leon this time around? Yeah, <laughs> I was asked that question many times and uh, it's not because I want to get depressed in the winter or spend a lot of money. It's more because uh, I love the island and it's um, something more extraordinary than uh, going to England or Spain. So. Um, I don't regret coming here. You can do a lot of trips and it is about free time and study on the same level and I love it. Yeah, yeah um, since I study geophysics, it's kind of a bit obvious. Um, Iceland is like unique in its uh, geological formation. It is pretty awesome and I really wanted to see it. And yeah, same as Leon, I felt like I don't want to go to Spain with Erasmus as anyone else does. Uh, I felt like doing something different, and it's been great so far. Um, I actually decided to take a change in life, so to speak. I used to work as a lawyer back in Brazil. Then I came to Iceland only to visit, and I fell in love with the country and decided to move here. So I checked the university out. I checked what uh, programs were available, so that we had sociology, which is a, a subject that I always liked and um, decided to go along with a master's in it and I've been here ever since and I, I mean I know that it's strange I'm from Brazil but I really like cold weather so <laughs> so it was a nice change for me yeah. so yes uh, Iceland was always in my radar uh, since my teenage years I was a little bit uh, afraid of moving somewhere so remote and cold in the beginning and I in the end, I moved to Slovenia, where I graduated in political science. And after 17 years living abroad, I decided to, I was ready to come to Iceland. I, I've been fascinated about the music, the arts, uh, the cinema, and especially uh, concerning the research conducted here in the University of Iceland. That's really interesting. And of course, you all had some preconceived notions about what it is that Iceland contains and what the experience would be, but was there anything that really surprised you when you actually moved here? For me, it was really surprisingly when I arrived here and I was like, oh, where's Corona gone? Because <laughs> um, Iceland adapted um, the Corona crisis really well. And um, then I came here and the university is much smaller than mine. And of course, yeah, we address our uh, professors by their first name. That's really cool. And it's different about um, the way we're studying. We have discussions, we have small assignments, we have a big campus and it's close connected. And I know people from, I don't know, um, study societies I never talked to before in Germany. I don't know what it was because we only hang around with business students and then there's a physics student next to me and we talked. 
That's really, really cool. It's yeah. a familiar atmosphere. Um, something that got me by, well, by surprise. I knew it was an expensive country, but it was much more expensive than I thought. But um, another thing that I, I think about as well is um, I also thought it was going to be much colder, which fortunately it's because I do like cold water, but not too cold. <laughs> but um, it's not as cold as I thought. Like, um, yeah. And well, it is extremely safe. It's really, really good to be here. Yeah. It's nice. Um, yeah, as you touched on, there are some cultural differences here, such as us uh, addressing our teachers by their first names. Was there anything related to your studies in particular that was an adjustment for you compared to other schools or universities that you've studied at? I was um, really surprised how small the classes are here. It's more like back home, we have like those huge lecture halls where you have like, I think in one lecture we had 400 people sitting in there, which is a lot. And here we are like, it's more like high school class. So there's more interaction. It's more like a very familiar atmosphere and everyone knows everyone and we laugh and joke a lot. That's very different and very nice. That's great. Um, I, I personally, sorry, uh, I found my uh, teachers to be extremely approachable and not just in my department, but in other departments as well. I'm used to visit them and have conversations and exchange ideas about uh, future research and things like that. And uh, another thing that uh, surprised me is uh, the initiative that we can also work in the university during summer. And I found this was a fantastic thing that I haven't seen in, in other universities. Great. Uh, I am um, kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, yeah, yeah. No, the credit system like that's something that for me. I know. I know that in other countries it is like this. You you choose which courses are you gonna take within your main subject, right, within your faculty. But that's that's not how it was in Brazil. And um, so I wasn't used to the system at all. And I got all the help that I needed when I arrived here, like choosing the courses and, you know, uh, limiting how many credits you're going to do per, per semester and so on and so on. But um, also, like Armando said, it's uh, the teachers are extremely accessible and, and very friendly. And I don't know if it's only me, but I just add people on Facebook. <laughs> 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 And then I, I you know, because things here in Iceland, that's another thing that's Iceland in general, I think, like how, how, how much it uses social network. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but um, like things really happen through it and, and people get very accessible because of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, the most important thing was um, seeing how people are getting involved and how um, engaged they are and it's about their studies, professors and students as well. Because when I started um, in Frankfurt, we had 700 students in one lecture hall and it was so formal, no one was talking at all. And you know, they have a good reputation of professors, but you can't see that they are really, um, yeah, I don't know, um, engaged in what they do. And you come here and then, oh my God, you, you're hyped up to um, see what other people are doing and why they behave and what they, what they learn. And, it's really interesting. It was capturing me on a different way than in my home university. It's so interesting to hear about your perspectives as someone who grew up in Iceland and has just sort of doesn't necessarily notice everything that you do notice about it. Uh, as a sort of final, final farewell to the people who are watching, if you had to sum up your experience here at the University of Iceland in three words, what would those words be? Can we start with you? Of course. Uh, let me think. Huh. Empowering, for sure. Uh, fulfillment, yes. And, uh, well, it's a struggle. Um, in my master's studies, going to hopefully PhD, so it is constant struggle. Three words, okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, achievement. Um, Empowerment, I'm going to appropriate your word. <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess freedom as well. No. No. Um, <clears throat> I would say definitely cozy because it's small but very like 
everything one is kind of a big family it's really nice um but very social like wherever you go like even grocery shopping or whatever you meet people you know which is really nice and there are a lot of parties <laughs> and um pretty wild like the wind the weather um again the parties <laughs> yeah it's a good mix mama sent cash no, just, just kidding. Um, it's uh, readings, um, coffee, and adventure. That's my three words. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for this chat. It was very enlightening for me. Hopefully, it was enlightening for the people watching as well. And thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your patience and welcome back. I'm here with Anita Hammerstofer, who's a project manager at the International Division at the University of Iceland. Hi, welcome. It's so good to be here with you. And if you guys have any questions that you want to ask us, please send them to, uh, in the chat. We are avidly awaiting questions, eager to answer them. Uh, what is the biggest part of your job in relation to helping international students arriving at the University of Iceland? Um, so the international division hosts the orientation days, which is open to all students, um, exchange and full-time students. My main uh, job is to um, assist exchange students coming to Iceland. So that would be like the Aurora students who are interested in coming to us, I would be the one assisting them. Great. We've just gotten a question to the chat. How do students find housing? Um, so we have on-campus housing. It's not um, everyone that gets in, but they have been building uh, quite a lot of uh, new housing and we're actually in part of it uh, now. Uh, we also have an agreement with a company and this is all listed on our website. So these are the two main options. We also um, have a Facebook group for um, students who are coming to the university. Um, and there they sort of talk together and you know, somebody finds housing and is interested in renting with somebody else. So housing has not been a big problem, luckily. It's great. Uh, we've received another question. It says, hi, I'm a PhD student working full-time as well. So I'd like to apply for an Aurora short-term short mobility scholarship. Does Howie offer summer courses? Um, at the moment, no. But as a PhD, a PhD student, I think this would be a question that would need to be uh, looked at more carefully on an individual basis. So. Uh, an email to uh, incoming at hi.is would be suitable to answer that question, I think. And if anyone has any questions that they can think of at a later time that they haven't thought of yet, then they can always email you, right? Yes, yes. And that's um, incoming at hi.is. Yes. Perfect. Uh, what are the language requirements for international students who'd like to do an exchange semester? Um, well, the courses that exchange students are taking, or international students are taking, are practically all in English. So um, we do expect students to have quite a, a good knowledge of English. But depending on whether they are exchanged or full time, there's there's a bit of a difference um, in the requirements there. So that is something that is on the website. But also for that question specific, I would ask them to send us an email. Okay. And how are the study semesters organized? As in dates then, or? I would assume yes. so. Yes, okay, so we start, um, the teaching starts very late in August um, and practically until the, the beginning of September, depending on the faculties um, and the schools. And um, the last exam like this year is the 16th of December. Some students may have finished earlier. But we start very early in January. We start classes um, on the, the 4th 
one faculty starts on the 4th of January, but most of them will start around 10th or 11th of January. Great. Um, we're not receiving any new questions at the moment. Um, so I would just maybe like to thank you for your time. Yes. And wrap this up. And thank you all for joining us. And again, if I can just say any questions, please uh, feel free to send us an email or go to our website. There is plenty of information there uh, regarding courses. Uh, there will be more information on courses available to Aurora students on the Aurora uh, part of our website. But for more information, please feel free to send an email to incoming at hi.is. Thank you.